guys, today I'm going to show you how to make this super cute illustration and I'm going to do an inking time lapse on another equally adorable piece. So keep watching. <laughs> So today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite quick ways to create really adorable little illustrations. And you're only going to really need three materials for this plus an eraser. You're going to need colored lead. We're going to use a uh, color Eno lead here and this is their light green. You're going to need a colored ink or a color marker or even fountain pen ink. And you're also going to need a waterproof brush pen such as the Pigma BB but we're going to be using the Pigma FB. So, the first thing you want to do, well, rather, I guess I should show you what we're going to be making. If I have any examples in this book, I might have to go grab my other book to show you guys. But, first thing we're going to do is we're going to sketch our illustration in our colored lead. And this is on watercolor paper. This is a Strathmore visual journal book. And the end result is going to end up looking something like this, where we're going to use colored inks, black ink, and our colored pencil lead to make a really cute, simple illustration. So after you've got your illustration sketched, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start filling in your color using the lead. I'm sorry, using your, your pen here. And this is a Pentel brush pen and they're available in 18 colors. There's also a pigment marker available. And one of the reasons we're using watercolor paper is it has a lot of absorbency to it, but also because we're going to get a bit of a dry brush effect. Which is what we want. It's why we're not using a solid brush uh, type. We're using something that has splayed bristles like this. You can get a more solid fill if you want, but I really like the dry brush effect. I think it looks somewhat retro, like uh, children's book illustrations from the 60s and the 50s. So what we're doing with this illustration is we are drawing in our grass first. You may find, given the nature of this very absorbent paper, that may get more dry brush than you want, that's okay. Just squeeze the brush to get more ink out. All right, we have our first layer down. Now we're gonna work on the background using very similar technique actually find it a little harder to work on the background than the foreground because you have to stop and start so much when you hit objects. And for a piece like this, doing the background first is going to be helpful because it's going to tell me how much green I want to use in the foreground in order to maintain an attractive balance. You want to be careful not to drag your hand in the ink because on this watercolor paper it takes quite a while to really fully dry. I like to let these pieces dry before dry for 24 hours. And I have my hand resting on the spiral. You may find it much easier to do if you remove this completely from your notebook or if you use non-spiral bound paper. I do like to keep all of these together though, so I will not be removing mine. All right, so now we've got the grass filled in. Uh, it's time to determine what in the foreground, and I could almost leave it as it is or go with like a black fill for some of these things. I think I'm going to do her shorts and her head kerchief. And for me, I like to leave a little bit of a white line between the area, the, the areas of green. So you see we have this blade of grass and then we have her shorts and then there is a white, white line. And we'll also 
do little green buttons. And I'm freehanding those, which is generally a mistake for me. It does not usually go very well. In fact, if you have a painter's mall or a calligrapher's mall, it might be really helpful for you right now because I'm struggling to find a place to rest my hand. And in order to pull nice lines, I do need the support. Okay, so for larger fills like this, I do enjoy a bit of a dry brush technique, especially as objects near a light source. All right, now that the green has been filled in, I'm going to give this ample time to dry. I wanted to show you one I worked on the other night. I gotta be careful in flipping this because this isn't dry. So we have, we have one in pink and purple that I'm going to ink. And I guess I'll do that on camera for you guys. And then after this one is dry, I'll ink this one as well. Hi friends, so I have inked for you two really adorable limited color pieces. I hope I have inspired you to try your own using your own style. And I hope I've inspired you to check out more of my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash If you enjoy these sort of tutorials, and you'd like to help support the creation of them, head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup for information on how you can join the art nerd community. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye!